Let's take a little bit closer look at our solutions for the free particle. Let's imagine that we have a potential energy that is zero for a bunch of x's and then um, suddenly increases, so steps up to some v naught. So these are both free particles because the potential energy is constant in both cases. It's zero in one case and it has a finite value in another case. So if we're in, if our particle is in this region here, so if we're in the region where the potential energy is zero, then our wave function, our wave vector, k, is equal to um, square root of 2m e minus zero divided by h bar. And so k is just equal to square root of 2m e over h bar, and that's a region where we have only kinetic energy. Um, and so the wave vector is related to the total energy, which is just kinetic energy. Now, classically, if this particle had an energy, right, that is less than the potential energy V naught, then when it travels over here to this barrier, it's going to not have enough kinetic energy to jump up over that barrier. And so it's gonna turn around and bounce off and come back. Classically, that is what we would expect because classically, the total energy is equal to the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And so the total energy always has to be greater than the, the kinetic energy and it has to be greater than the potential energy. And so if um, we have this situation here where the particle has an energy that is less than V naught, then we call that a classically forbidden region. So what that means, right, is that my particle can never be over here, classically. It can never be over there. But let's think about our solutions for the quantum mechanical case. So in the quantum mechanical case, we have that our wave function is equal to C1 e to the minus i k x plus C2 e to the i k x. And so if um, k is equal to square root of 2 m e minus v naught over h bar, then if e is less than v naught, so I'm in this classically forbidden region, then um, we're going to have a imaginary k. So all this does is it makes my solution um, such that k is imaginary. So I could write k as um, i square root of 2m v naught minus e over h bar, because I could just um, uh, factor out a negative sign from here. So I have a negative sign, and the square root of minus one is i, and when I factor out that negative sign, it flips these two variables, right? So I could write k in this way, and then when I plug k into my solution up here, um, the imaginary number i times this i equals minus one. So i squared equals minus one. So i times i is minus one times a minus is plus, and I end up with in that region um, where I have v naught greater than e, I have c1 e to the kx, not imaginary, plus c2 e to the minus kx. And so I have a wave function that is a valid wave function that exists in the region where classically the particle could never be. And that, that wave function tells me that there is a probability, because psi squared is finite, 
there is a probability that the particle will be in the region um, where it would be classically forbidden. So this is a strange part of um, the, the quantum mechanical solution. And it has to do with the fact that we're thinking about these particles as waves and not as just solid particles. And so that wave can kind of leak through that barrier and have some probability to be on the other side where it classically would never be.